a chat bot that knows more than just Taylor Swift lyrics, it can find your TPS reports and more. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is David Karandish. He is the co-founder and CEO of Jane.ai. Welcome, David. Hello. You've got quite the tech resume. Give us a summary of what brought you to found Jane.ai. So I've been in the tech space for about 20 years, uh, all the way back from when designing a web page put you at about the level of being a wizard or a warlock. Uh, and then uh, done a lot in the online marketing space, most recently at a company called Answers.com. And then we started Jane.ai in January of last year. What problem is Jane.ai designed to solve? Jane is here to make all of your company intelligence accessible in a simple chat interface. You could think of her like having your own Siri or Alexa for the workplace, where she connects to your company's apps, documents, and the knowledge of your team. Explain the process that Jane follows to build the client data set. Data set. But Jane will connect to first your company's key applications. So uh, things like Salesforce, Office 365, ServiceNow, Workday, you name it. If it has a cloud-based API, we can probably connect to it. Uh, from there, uh, Jane can go retrieve information. Uh, she can also start to take actions on your behalf. The second area that she connects to are your documents. So she can read the contents of your documents and make that available for your whole team. And then lastly, uh, we create a knowledge base where uh, Jane can take all the uh, information you have that doesn't live in an app or a document and make that available as well. You still have a layer of human involvement creating and cleaning the data though, correct? So we don't believe it should be people against AI. Uh, we believe that they should be working together. And so uh, one of the fundamental design flaws in a lot of AI systems is that if you ask them a question and they don't know the answer, you're out of luck. So for us, if you ask Jane a question and she doesn't know the answer, she's going to bring a person in the loop to help you get the right response. Okay, get geeky with us, David. Tell us about the incorporating natural language processing and how Jane learns from new questions and requests. So Jane has built off a series of neural networks and algorithms. Some of them uh, very high tech, a bunch of convolutional neural networks. Some of them are uh, pretty simple, like spell check and uh, taking your company's acronym list. Uh, but she combines all this together and then we ensemble a bunch of votes. So think of uh, all the algorithms voting and saying whether or not we should or should not match to a particular uh, candidate. Uh, based on those votes, she'll either come back to you with an answer from an app, a document, or a person, or she'll send it off to a co-pilot where someone can come back and uh, help you get that response. Now, we recognize that the world is not always that black or white, so if she's right on the line, uh, she'll come back to you with a clarifier where she says, did you mean A, B, or C? If you then select B, she'll remember that, that feeds back into the neural network, and she'll remember it for next time. A co-pilot is a human, I take it? Copilot is uh, one or multiple humans on your team uh, that can help uh, organize Jane's knowledge base. How have you integrated other apps to work with Jane? Yeah, so uh, what we do is we design the service first. And this is something different than a lot of other companies. So uh, for us, services would be like email and calendar and HRIS and CRM, uh, ticketing and cloud drives. And then all the apps that we connect uh, to that service share the same skills. The reason that that's beneficial is that if your IT team decides to switch from Jira to ServiceNow or from NetSuite to Salesforce or from ADP to Workday, you don't have to learn a new way of interacting with Jane because all of the, say, HRIS skills are the same. Once we design that service, we hook Jane up to whatever APIs are available for those apps, and then she's able to go both retrieve information and take actions on your behalf. What separates Jane from the average chatbot? Great question. What separates Jane from the average chatbot is first of all, Jane has learning at the forefront. So we knew that if you ask Siri a question on your phone, she doesn't have the answer, you're out of luck. We knew that that's okay if you're my five-year-old daughter looking up Taylor Swift lyrics, uh, but if you're a team member, if you're a customer, you've got to be able to get that answer and it has to be able to learn even when it doesn't know the answer. So we put learning at the forefront. Uh, the second big thing is that Jane speaks the lexicon of your organization. 
So we don't want her to just speak US English, but we want her to speak US English with your own dialect, your own phrasing, the own ways that you uh, work in the organization. So she'll know what the TPS reports stand for, if you will. Uh, the third thing about Jane is that in addition to the learning and the, uh, and the dialect, she can also pick up uh, information out of your documents. So a lot of times people think about the apps, they're easy to understand how she could connect to Salesforce or Dropbox, but the documents themselves have a treasure trove of information. And so she can go take information out of your, say your company handbook or your sales training material, and make all of that accessible. What technology breakthrough needs to happen to enable the next great leap forward with machine learning and artificial intelligence? Machine learning and AI are continuing to make step function progress. And each time a new uh, uh, major type of neural network comes out, uh, you'll find a lot of people improve it, and then it kind of hits a new baseline, and then we, we jump up from there. Uh, in terms of where you're going to start to see uh, major step function improvements, I think it's going to happen when you can start to chain various uh, responses together. So it's one thing to ask a question and get an answer back. It's another thing to have an ongoing dialogue and conversation. And so most neural nets today are trained with individual inputs and outputs. I believe long term you'll have full conversations that train the, the system that help you better uh, understand natural language processing. David Karandish, co-founder and CEO of Jane.ai. Thanks for shedding some insight and talking about the work that you're doing. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they go about doing that? Uh, you can check us out at jane.ai on your favorite browser. Sounds good. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyaha.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.